Volunteering is the ultimate exercise in democracy. You vote in elections once a year, but when you volunteer, you vote every day about the kind of community you want to live in. You participate fully by leading by example, not because you have saved so much, but simply because you have the heart. My name is Alicia Abongo Angela. I'm the director of Mid South Junior School. We started uh, in 2007. Uh, third term, with only two kids and two teachers and two temporary classrooms. So many schools, if it is a private school, it is like a business oriented. But this one is a, a more of a helping the kids, like making money. That's why I've even struggled this much to make this school this beautiful. It is now, and I can say it is much beautiful. But when you get into my house up country, you will be surprised. <laughs> Very temporary structure, it looks a little bit funny, but first of all, I take this school to be, give it the first uh, priority. And uh, it is transforming the life of children, not just about education. Because getting A's, we've seen people that are graduates, but they don't know even what to do. But here we really follow them, we talk to them, that uh, apart from getting the good results that they're getting, we really make sure that we build them up holistically. We teach them how to go out there, how to express themselves. And that's why in Jiru sub-county, you find that we've been number one. All the time we take a child there, they become number one in public speaking for the last five years. This community is uh, really good. They value the school. Uh, they give me a lot of support. Uh, most of the time you'll even find them, even the ones that are, their kids are not learning in this school, they say that this is our school. They also, always also are proud of their performance because we normally write it all outside the gate. It, it stays there for months. So they really enjoy, they're happy about it. Also, whenever they have uh, maybe visitors, some of them will come ask for the space and I uh, normally give it. So they consider it their school. I'm called Kevin Odwar, uh, well known as Balozi, um, the founder of Balozi Waman Initiative, which is a community-based organization. Um, we are serving in peace and um, doing a lot of charity work in the community. Uh, we met with uh, Fred Sadia during the Good Deeds Day uh, celebration. Um, I think it was 2017. That is when I met him uh, during the event and I wanted to know more about the good deeds and we went further to join to be partners of the, the good deeds uh, celebration. And again we joined the membership of uh, volunteer involving organizations which is an umbrella of volunteering organizations in Kenya. We've done quite a number of events because they are the primary uh, partners of our organization. Number one, they, they give us a space to have an office at first because, because we, you know, we are the community based in the grassroots. So they nurtured us in a, a way that they even gave us a, a space to their office so that we, they hosted us. Having that, so we normally do joint activities in most of the, quite a number of events that we do. He was working with the children, I work with the children too. And uh, in fact, uh, I say I like revenging. Uh, I left, uh, I live a very bitter life. Then I was like uh, bitter most of the time in my life. Then I thought like, uh, the people who did bad to me, what can I do to them? Then I thought of doing it now opposite. That if I realize that you did something bad to me, I do it opposite, I do much for you. For example, I used to live with a a relative who used to even hide the food under the bed for me. So one day she came to my place. I made sure that she was overeating, preparing nice food for her, doing a lot of things for her. So that is what I've been teaching a lot of the people, even when I do guidance and counseling, that it is uh, really benefiting to revenge positively. And therefore, when I got about doing good, it is something that I already I was doing. Then that is when I, we came to be very close friends with the Fred and the VIO society. I 
was like, what can I do also to join up? Therefore, each and every year we normally participate in uh, Good Deeds Day. I take the children, they showcase the, the joy and uh, different things that we do. My name is Frederick Sadia. I am a volunteer and I always say that volunteering has made me. But it happened to be the national coordinator and secretary to a network that brings several volunteer involving organizations together. The network was founded in 2004 and the reason uh, was to bring as many of these organizations to work with government in trying to create what we call enabling in environment for volunteering. So this include police infrastructure, legal infrastructure, and in 2008 we started working very closely with the Ministry of Labor and Social Protection and we were working with them because it is within that ministry that volunteerism is domiciled. So we were working to develop a national volunteerism policy since 2008 and eventually in 2016 Kenya had the first national volunteerism policy in our close partnership working with the government. Again, we felt that the policy is good, but for us to really achieve, we needed to work on a law. So as, since around 2016, we started working on a legal infrastructure. We've done quite amazing work in, in doing this, uh, led by the Ministry of Labor, State Department for Social Protection. And at least as we speak, we have a, a draft bill on volunteerism in Kenya. Some of the members of the VIO Society include the UNV, United Nations Volunteers, the Kenya Red Cross. We have Balozi Wamani. We have uh, uh, this uh, institution here, the Middle South School. We are in excess of about 50 uh, registered members to the network, both small and uh, bigger organizations. Some of them are national, others are international organizations. And um, apart from just the members that are signed up to work with us in the network, we also have several that work and join us when we are doing activities almost all through around the year. And these ones are in excess of 200 other civil society organizations, beginning from self-help groups to international NGOs that we work with. Apart from being the national coordinator and the secretary to the VIO Society, I also happen to be the Kenya representative to the Good Deeds Day movement. Good Deeds Day is a global movement that was founded in Israel way back in 2007. And um, I happen to have interacted with them uh, in the past years. Actually, it is interesting to note that um, we've hosted uh, the global CEO of the Good Deeds Day. And at one point, we got an opportunity to also be hosted at the KBC for an interview about doing good. So the movement began in 2007 in Israel. And it operates on uh, the basis of three very simple uh, uh, what we call basis. One, it is about thinking good, speaking good, and going out to do good. So um, when I met uh, this uh, good friend of ours from Israel, his name is Kanan Rabino, he's the global leader of the Good Eats Day movement. However, the Good Eats Day movement was founded by a, a, a philanthropist and a business, a lead businesswoman or in, in Israel known as Sherry Arizon. But when I met Kanan, I think we first met in Rwanda in 2015, in Kigali. And I thought the idea was so good. So I said that I want to bring this thing back home. And then again, we happened to meet in Mexico City in 2016. And 2017, I brought the idea home, gave it to the government. And as we speak today, Good It's Day celebration is one in the calendar of the government at the State Department for Social Protection. And we've celebrated ever since 2017, doing major events in Nairobi, 2017 Nairobi, 2018 in Nairobi, 2019 in Nairobi, and working very closely with the county government of Nairobi. The first one, we were welcomed and hosted by governor, the former governor Kidero, then came in Governor Sonko, whom we even crowned the Goodwill Ambassador for Good Deeds Day in Kenya in 2018. And now we've started the partnership again, working with the county government under the leadership of uh, Governor Sakaja. And um, it's been exciting because in 2020, we went down to the coast 
and worked very closely to plan with Governor Joho, but then COVID happened. We couldn't proceed on with the event. We tried again 2021 at the coast. Again, COVID happened, so we were doing very small activities around that period of the celebrations. In Kiswahili, they say, ukiona vyaelea, ujue vimeundwa. Yes, that drives us to our question of interest. Why do you care? I was born and raised in upcountry, in the rural area. I come from uh, Siaya County, Rarieda sub-county, uh, in a small, very beautiful village called Assembo. Um, and, uh, you know, I grew up in, uh, my parents were peasant farmers, and I got a lot of inspiration from how kind they were. Like, our homestead wouldn't miss people. You'll find, you know, uh, guests coming in the morning and leaving late in the night, and I was wondering why the connection. And my dad, may his soul rest in peace. I just uh, led him to rest uh, last month on the 11th. He, he was such a kind guy, you know, he'll accept and treat everyone almost equally. My mom was also, you know, such a lady. She rested way back when I was just in high school in the 90s, you know, so. But I drew so much uh, from them. The art of kindness, you know, the art of giving back. Uh, the, the, the urge to always deny yourself and reach out to someone. And then in high school, I happened to have met and been taught by uh, a Japanese volunteer. So that's when I started becoming so keen about volunteering. I said, this is something that really brings someone from far away coming to Kenya and just giving their services for free. I said, I can't do it because I'm also here. But then I went through secondary school, lived like any other rural boy, you know, doing uh, our keeping our animals and, and tilling our uh, farmland. But then after high school, I came to the city and my first stop where my brother used to live was Kibra in Katwikira, another informal settlement. With all the challenges, I decided to look at the opportunities that were was in that community. And, and I, I, I realized that the people in the city, especially those of us who are living in, in informal areas, were worse off than some of us were living in the rural, you know. The perception that the city is cool, and then you come and boom, trash is all over the place. So I stay here in Kibra, in Katwikira with my brother. That was way back, 98, you know. And I start seeing at how people are struggling. Did a bit of Django just to also make sure that I could uh, take care of my other siblings back at home and support my dad in taking care of the of us. But in 1999, uh, I love to do a lot of soccer sports and so at the Woodley Stadium, uh, I used to go there to play soccer. Then one evening, I'm there and I see two white men. One was on a wheelchair and there was a, a tent across the pitch at the Woodley Stadium. I'd never dared to go there. But this time round, uh, I was touched because this guy was struggling to put his uh, colleague who was in a wheelchair in the van. So I walk up and I talk to them and I say, please may I help? And, you know, they didn't say yes, help. They looked at me and the question was, oh, so you can speak in English, you know, and that was very, like, but I kind of swallowed that. And I say, yes, I speak in English and I'm willing to help. Can I help you to take your food, uh, allow your colleague to, to sit in the van? Then they accepted Then I got interested to get to ask what was happening at the tent. And when I realized that uh, inside that tent they were taking care of street children, as it were, uh, then I again asked myself the same question I asked myself when I was in high school. Why would someone come from so far away to do something that I could do while I'm here? And that was the last and the beginning of me and serving community. So since 20, uh, 90, uh, 1999 to date, I've never looked back. I gave myself to uh, service to humanity and um, volunteered with that organization. Uh, for so many years, left and changed organizations. And I think the best that I've done with my life is volunteering, doing good. And many a times I realize that, I say, wait a minute, when did I get my last pay? And I can't tell when I got my last pay. And that's why I defined myself that volunteering has made me. This is the person I am. Uh, later, you know, doing all this thing and getting a lovely lady and getting married and she was always wondering why in my small house, wherever I ever lived, there were so many people coming in, young girls and like, no, 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 you, you, you know, with all this, you know, but it was all about the beauty of welcoming everyone home, you know, just to allow them to learn, just to give them, you know, share the list that I had. Um, I remember one day uh, I was headed to church 
and then we had little money and I was the one carrying this. And then one of my friends, uh, one of the sick children asked me about uncle lunch. So I say like, hey Maze, we only had a hundred shillings as we were coming from church. And then I tried to look for change for this money. I didn't get. So I decided to give the, the boy the whole of a hundred uh, shillings we had. We didn't have nothing completely. And my wife is like, what kind of a guy this is, you know. And, but now she's learned to live and supporting my work. Uh, an amazing uh, lady uh, that has supported me the last 18 years of my relentless service to serve my people. When he looks back, he can't help but smile about this far he has come. When I started my volunteering journey way back 1999, I worked as a teacher. So I used to tutor English and mathematics and soccer. Uh, that is the first assignment I had with the first organization that I got in 1999, which I mentioned earlier. So I started as a teacher. Then I got interested in visiting the streets and getting just to know what was happening in the streets. So uh, I think between 1999 up to 2008, I was a friend to all the street corners within the city of Nairobi, working with street families, you know, and just trying to find a way by which we could take these children out of the streets young girls and boys and also look at how we could support the mothers and uh, I did this with a number of organizations and I am happy where I sit today I'm happy that um, I've touched so many lives that I couldn't even uh, kind of try to count and to remember because I remember there was also a time that I worked extensively with young mothers uh, you know teenage mothers uh, at a lower age there is a time also that I got an opportunity to volunteer with an organization and we were focusing on commercial sex workers, visited Majengo, did the whole of the north coast in, uh, at the coast on city of Mombasa, stretching and just trying to find a way by which we could support them. Most of them uh, unfortunately were living with HIV and AIDS and the stigma around HIV and AIDS at that particular time. So working with them and just seeing them, you know, uh, come back to life. It's the greatest joy you could ever, ever, ever imagine. So I remember one specific case of a, a mother that we had visited in Madare, and she was bedridden and had about three girls who were not all in school. So in the project I was working, we could only admit one girl. Uh, but out of a personal interest, I said, no, no, no. I would approach the leadership and tell them that we have to take all the children. So one was, actually one was a boy, two girls and others. So I reached out and they accepted to take the two girls and I looked for another institution to take the boy. Uh, this mother was so devastated because she was so bedridden and actually what she told me that she was waiting for her day so that she can rest, you know. But I was touched that I tried to make sure that I connected this lady to a healthcare facility that she could get. I am happy, just recently I was told by another young man that I also mentored that um, she was called Mama Ida. That Mama Ida called him recently asking about Fred. At the point of death, and that was way back in 2004, and just recently, less than two weeks ago, this mother is calling to ask about me. I'm happy she's alive. This is the joy, you know. And a number of young boys, you know, there was a time that I used to work with gangsters as well. And when we were walking along the cities of Nairobi, or the streets of Nairobi, they would tell me, uh, you know, just to safeguard me because I was reaching out to them and telling them that crime doesn't fail. They needed to change and make their lives better, you know. So these are the little, uh, the few that I've done. Uh, and then later I left the direct interaction and I started get, uh, having a keen interest in national volunteering. And this is when the VIO Society was being founded in 2004. I was uh, a volunteer with uh, AMREF. We used to have a, a group known as Ungana Young Friends of AMREF. At that particular time, I was the person in charge of all the activities. They used to call me uh, that, that role, a volunteer action officer, so that I was in charge of planning for as many activities. So I did that for so many years. They Later, they elected me to be the chair of the group, for which I served and until 2008. Along the journey, so many things happened. I continued my volunteering, trying to also make a, you know, ends meet for my family, doing one or two, three stuffs. But then, in 2011, I got to hurt my left eye, and, and I love the story because uh, I got hurt 
doing what I love, volunteering. I was instructing a group of young street boys on how to fix something. Then a piece of nail broke off and hit my eye. And um, as painful as it were, went through this process of surgeries, a number of them, about four surgeries, trying to save sight. We couldn't, but I take it as a mark of doing what I really loved to do. And um, 2012, uh, I started getting to feel better and uh, started to revive the VIO society. Talking to colleagues, I said, where can we take this network? What can we do with government? And eventually in 2014, I took up the role of the secretary and the national coordinator. And I look back to date and I'm glad what we've been able to do as a team. Because today Kenya has a policy, by the way, which we are going to review because it has lived its uh, five uh, year term. We are talking about a bill uh, which we hope uh, that this government will look into and make into a law. And why I had the drive is because when I got hurt in 2011, there was no recourse. Like I tried to look, there was no law, there was no policy that was safeguarding even my own uh, health security. You know, so I had to you know, raise money the Kawaida way of Kuchanga from, from family and friends. But I felt that this is not right, something needs to be done. So I committed that I'll be, as long as I live, stick around until I'm, I would work with other people or the relevant government agencies to ensure we have a policy and we have a law. I still hope I'll have the strength to do this so that in the next one or so years, Kenya would have a, a national volunteerism policy and an active law. Despite the good deeds that the organization has been able to do, it has been faced with challenges that may easily make one give up. There are challenges indeed, you know. Um, first, just allow me to say that volunteering is not internship or attachment. Attachment is because you, you have to do it for you to proceed on with your studies. As much as an internship, maybe after college, you have to do that. But volunteering is purely something you do out of free will. And, and therefore, it starts from there that it has to begin with the motivation of why you want to volunteer. Do you want to volunteer just because you don't have work to do? That is not a good motivation to go out and volunteer because then you are just doing it. Uh, let me just do it. But somehow it is also good because it can eventually lead you into doing uh, serious volunteer work. And we've also observed that volunteering is a pathway to employment that, you know, if you're a committed person, like even for the few consultancies that I've been able to do, it is because of the commitment that I've had, learning through the ropes, you know, through the trade, and then you get to, to see the beautiful things that come. I don't want to uh, say that it is easier, but I want to focus so much on the opportunities within volunteering. You know, you get to interact and meet so many people. You get to interact with so many organizations that are doing uh, volunteer work, like the Kenya Red Cross, VSO International in Kenya, the UNV program in Kenya, the President's Award program in Kenya. And when you leverage and make better use of such opportunities, then you get, you develop so many um, tangible skills that you know you, you you know you can use to also help you to leverage when you go out to seek for a job. If, for example, I had a colleague that has been within my institution for some time and there was a job opportunity, not to be biased, but because he or she has learned with us, it would always be like almost automatic to uh, absorb them into the mainstream uh, uh, working uh, group. But however, we always, at the same time, caution some of us who take advantage of volunteers that you know it is something that you can pay for or you can employ someone to do that, but we want to take advantage of a volunteer. And that one is the reason as to why we are looking into volunteer protection. But straight back to the challenges. One, volunteering is not for the faint-hearted. You know, you're going to get disappointed along the way. As I mentioned, it begins with the motivation. So when your motivation is not right, when you don't think good, when you don't share good and you go out and do good, you'll get discouraged along the way and you leave it. The other one is that, uh, as I mentioned, sometimes in some institutions they take advantage of volunteers and misuse them, quote unquote. And so um, any volunteer out there should always be keen to be, you know, so sure that the, the things that they're doing is not that which is taking advantage over them. The other challenge is, of course, the lack of finances. Most of the institutions, especially the community-based organizations, they don't have the resources to pay, not even to give a stipend, not even something to, you know, uh, by Sabuni, Yakuenda Kuasha Manguo. But we encourage them, uh, this is among us the members that are registered within my network, we encourage them that try the least you can 
at least to appreciate volunteers that you are engaging. But it is a challenge that uh, volunteering is not uh, paid, but at the same time volunteering is not cheap. I draw my motivation from deep within me. I therefore then look into the society where I belong and I ask myself one simple question. What can I do to change, even if it was just a little? And that push has kept me going for the last more than 20 years in my volunteering journey. And I proudly mention over and over that volunteering has made me because then out of the stories, out of the experiences that I've had there, it makes me want to do one more. If I have to breathe again, I just want to do one more. And that has been the push, the many smiles I see. Having a people that are living peaceably, uh, we champion for so much peace and cohesion among us, people where they live. Talk about the post-election violence 2007, 2008. So many of us were on the street just trying to bring people together. In the period of COVID when there was absolute hopelessness, you give a smile and that smile becomes so much of your motivation that you want to, to continue to do this. And I think even so critically that I realized that I'm a family man. I have my own children. Which world do I want to leave for them? I want them to live in a better world. I want them to be appreciated as they appreciate other people as well. So this then is the push that makes me want to do the least I can every moment. The future is clearly bright and yes, it is one step at a time. Changing one life at a time and hoping to build that desirable empowered community. You know sometimes you want to tell somebody even thank you but you don't know, you lack no words to say. He has done a lot and I know he's not demanding anything because it's like it's something that he likes. And that is why we are together because he was doing good to so many different people and then now we are doing it uh, to, together. Uh, I really thank him, I appreciate him. And uh, I know we'll continue working uh, harder to help more and more other people. I might lack uh, the proper words to tell him uh, because he's a person with a golden heart. You know, he's, he's always giving, even if he doesn't have. So I can only tell him to keep, keep doing that. I want to speak a little bit about the Good It's Day movement. Good It's Day is, uh, as I mentioned, a global movement. So we are going to celebrate the Good It's Day on the 16th, this Sunday. Uh, and it's going to be celebrated all around the world on the 16th. On Sunday, we say on an easy Sunday morning and Sunday, where you just go out and feel good. On, on Sunday, we'll be having exhibitions, organizations coming to share or showcase the great things that they're doing. We're partnering with the ministry, the county government of Nairobi, and most likely we are going to be along City Hall Way, where we've always done it every time we did it in Nairobi. And we are inviting as many people who come to this event to come, you know, see what we're doing, come join the circles of doing good. And um, it's going to be great, and I want to invite you to come. To, to experience the great things that uh, organizations are doing. But finally, I also want to just say that um, I'm glad for this opportunity. I hope we're gonna get this opportunity, but some of us may not necessarily need it. I tell you, there are so many heroes out there and sheroes, as if, if there is a word as this, that are doing amazing stuff. Sometimes I look at them and I think they're better off than myself. I wish that you'll continue uh, reaching out to the farthest corners of this country, to the first, farthest corner of this city, and many other cities around the, uh, the country, and to talk about, you know, just get to learn about the amazing work that uh, people are doing. Mm -hmm.